Hey everyone, welcome to episode 15. In this one, we get this wall cleaned up, get the stucco retextured, get the ledger stone up, and the border around the ledger stone. I get my pot rack up with all of my cast iron and steel pans, get some artwork up, and a announcement on future videos. Uh, got a new truck. So, first, this process was a little bit of a pain. Uh, evidently, they used uh, Loctite. I think that is a Loctite product that I'm trying to scrape off, and this area is not going to be covered. So I really needed to take my time to retexture this, and I'll tell you how I did it. First thing I did was I scraped off all of the uh, silicone that they put along the top. If you go back to episode one, you'll see this piece of granite that went all the way across where the cabinet was, which is basically where all that orange or you know terracotta color paint is. Uh, once I scraped off all of the silicone, then I took a smaller chisel and chipped off the Loctite product, and then I painted everything so that I could see where the line is and where the imperfection is, and you can see it uh, right through there. I used a paper towel to give the paint a little bit more texture, make it look more like concrete. Uh, and then you can see better now at night where that line was from where I had to chip off the silicone. And uh, what I did was I just dabbed thin set in there and then uh, took a putty knife and you know flattened it up against the wall in the same direction that they originally put the stucco. Um, I had to do this a couple times back and forth. I even had to chip off a little bit more stucco. Uh, that's what it looks like there in the morning um, to kind of spread out that line uh, to make it disappear. Uh, then I went ahead and painted it again and uh, as you can see it turned out great. You can't even tell where that line was. Uh, the stucco pattern is matched and uh, I painted down far enough below the ledger stone so that you'll never see any of this once it's all done. I also had to remove those three bolts. You can see those holes on the right. Those three bolts were hurricane shutters. Before this house had hurricane glass, it had hurricane shutters, and they just left the bolts in the wall, which is pretty normal here in Florida. Uh, but I went ahead and removed those three because they have a, a bump that affects the ledger stone. I had to do the same thing on the other side of the glass doors. I had a little bit of a problem keeping this level because the pavers were so unlevel. I did not, because this is an area that you really see, I didn't want to end up with a gap on the right and not on the left. So what I did was lay the stones, or lay the ledger flat to the paver stones. And then you can see I'm using zip ties. And if you, uh, if you, if you stack, I guess, probably four zip ties, you, that equals about a quarter inch. So by spacing out four rows of ledger with zip ties, you end up correcting for over a quarter inch gap. I had a little bit more of a quarter inch difference. So what I was doing is sawing down the edges of the stones on the left by about an eighth of an inch, and then using the spacers, the zip tie spacers on the right to compensate. So basically that whole wall is kind of twisted to the left you know, twisted uh, counterclockwise in order to make it appear level. Uh, it came out perfect, but this is just kind of the pre-work, along with the work of keeping the pattern random. Uh, there's just, you know, it's just such a lot going on. I don't think people really realize you don't just throw this stone up. You really have to uh, think through which finished product is going to look like. Anyway, once I got all the stone up, uh, I actually decided to make it about a quarter inch lower than the other side of the window. You can't see this. The only way you would know is if you put a laser on it. But the reason why I did that is because I wanted the cap to be level with the top of the granite way up there on the left corner. And, and, and that just happens to be a quarter inch less than the rest of it uh, on the other side of the glass door. But it's far enough away that you can't even tell. And uh, it came out really really nice. Here I am finishing up the stone and starting in on the border. Whenever I do these borders I always start with the edges. Um, I did the I had to cut the piece on the far left to get it to slip in underneath the one inch overhang of the granite and then I did the 45 and mudded that in place 
and then I had to cut with the saw to get the ledger stone to be perfectly spaced. Let's just kind of true it up a little bit. And then I was able to get two full sticks of this molding in and then about a three inch piece down at the bottom. Uh, and then I did the same thing. You, you just kind of fit them together and space them out and match the color as best you can. But I find if you work, if you set your two ends and then work in towards the middle, it's totally non-intuitive. You wouldn't think that that would be the best way to do it. Uh, but it really is start with your ends and then work your way in towards the middle and uh, you have a much better chance of matching your color and getting it to look like you're using the largest pieces possible. Uh, I put in a lot of mud and let the mud all squirt out. You can see it there along the top and then I clean it up later and that really helps to set the stone in. It also, uh, where all the mud oozes out, it helps to hide your seams if you have any imperfect seams. So this is a pot rack that I got on Amazon. It's actually the exact same brand style that I had in the old kitchen. I'll put that video right here. And uh, I had all these pans originally inside the house. And what I used this area for in the old house was barbecue tools, charcoal tools, stuff like that, because I had a big green egg in the old kitchen. Um, and um, there was just more components that I needed a place to store. Well, only having gas, uh, and the fact that my wife will no longer let me put my pans inside. In fact, I'll put this video right up top. This is a video of my uh, steel and carbon, I mean steel and cast iron pan collection. Um, she won't let me hang these inside anymore. Uh, and you know, I pick my battles. Uh, so I uh, finally have a home for them. Uh, ever since we moved, it's been uh, not quite two years. Uh, all my stuff has been in boxes up in the uh, garage, up in the racking in the garage. Uh, so I finally get it out and you'll see that in a minute. But first, uh, we were at an art festival. In fact, here's a couple, couple videos from that. It's huge. If you're familiar with the area of Cape Coral, it's from Del Prado to Cape Coral Parkway. It's probably about four or five blocks. The uh, booths include food, uh, crafts, leather works, metal art. Uh, everything, everything you can imagine. And I found these in a uh, art booth. Uh, what this artist has done, and I'll put the link in the description, is he's taken a photograph and laser printed it on a piece of wood that he, it looks like he pre-distresses the wood a little bit, laser prints the, the fish image. In this case, I got a tarpon, a snook, and a redfish. And then he goes over it with kind of a wash, right, to, to set the color. So you can see the tarpon has a blue wash, the redfish has a uh, kind of a, an amber wash, and, a, and the snook, uh, I think it has kind of a green wash to it. But anyway, uh, he laser prints this, does the wash, and then does some sort of distressing type of paint work. And uh, they, they look really cool. I really liked them. I went ahead and bought them, and, uh, and this was the plan uh, to put here above the pot rack. Uh, once I got them all spaced evenly, I went ahead and tap conned in all four corners uh, with a uh, tap con with a washer uh, style. And um, then I went over the tap cons with a little bit of gold paint. I cut, you can see here, I cut a, a hole in a piece of cardboard and then just shot some gold paint. And that paint will tarnish over time and really look good uh, with the design uh, or the theme, I guess, of those uh, paintings. It occurred to me while I was uh, editing that you might want to see a little close-up detail of what I did here. This is the gold Tapcons. And right now they're, they're pretty cold, actually. Uh, I just kind of misted them. But what I believe will happen is they will uh, tarnish and start to look distressed like the fish image. There's a uh, close up of the fish. You can see it's like a laser printing. They're really cool. Uh, and then here's my pans. These are, uh, these actually aren't made anymore. These are from Australia. It's called Aus Iron. This one and this one. This is about the uh, the best uh, grilled cheese cast iron I've got. Uh, this one here is a Blanc, Blanc uh, 
Mont Blanc Creative. That's a blue skillet back there, if you know anything about these. You're uh, adding up the cost here in your head, I'm sure. Uh, this is a smithy. Uh, this is a blue skillet. This is a Blanc Creative. And then we have uh, two more Blanc Creatives. Um, and another Blanc Creative back there. Uh, some of my favorites. Um, I will say probably the Smithy here is um, is my favorite go-to cast iron. And then uh, this guy right here is my favorite go-to steel pan. Uh, up top here, I've got some steamer domes for the griddle. I've got a, a little hamburger press. This was actually made in uh, Turkey. Uh, I got it on Etsy. It's a chunk of stainless with a you know, and it's just a style of doing smash burgers where you uh, roll the, the meat out with a very, very thin edge, but a rather thick center. It's just a particular style. Um, and then I've got some other barbecue tools and a little bit of a, uh, oh, we've got a motorcycle going by. Uh, this is a, you know, heat heat protector for the end of the thing this is this is a smithy uh leather thing my, my daughter got me that uh anyway that is uh, oh and over here we've got a splatter guard a uh brush hey how you doing um and a spoon tray thing uh but oh also rotisserie up there this thing is just so functional there's so much that uh i could hang there and i love it I absolutely love it. You can tell I geek out over this stuff. I patched the walls from the old artwork and then went ahead and hung up all my steel and cast iron. Uh, I love this stuff. I have zero concern that it's going to corrode out here in the weather because it's seasoned so well. Uh, I use them pretty frequently and I got a ton of videos on them. Put the link right up here. Uh, but once uh, once they were up and in place, I went ahead and painted all of the uh, thin set uh, patches and whatnot. And that wrapped up the work on this wall and uh, really got me to a stopping point here with the series. And I'll explain that in a minute here. I'm finally to a point where I can stop working on this project. I can't do any more until the cabinet doors come in. Alfresco says maybe March, so we'll see. I have no idea how long that's gonna take, uh, but I can't say I'm all that disappointed to take a break. It's been uh, 16 weeks, 15 episodes. I think this is episode number 15. And uh, it's been a long time coming. This patio has not been free of tools that entire time. Uh, so I'm kind of happy to have the space back, live with it a little bit. Let me show you why I have to stop. And also I'll give you a little tour of this space. And I'll give you a, a nighttime tour also because the lighting out here is pretty neat. Uh, in the meantime though, as far as the channel, I'm going to be posting some videos on uh, my truck. I've actually put the Tacoma up for sale. I'm getting a new truck. Uh, pretty much for the channel. I mean, I, I do want the truck, but I have a lot of projects planned for it. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, it's on order. Maybe it'll come uh, in the next couple months. You know, it's really anybody's guess. Also, I've got a video planned for the 911, uh, 50 things to do to your 911. I haven't made a video on that car in a long time, so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, I've also got the headlight project to do on the 911. So uh, lots of uh, content planned. Uh, so just because this uh, series here is over, um, there'll be plenty of more completely random videos uh, that I'll be posting. So let's get to the tour of the outdoor kitchen. Here's a wide angle view at night. This awning retracts. It's actually pretty cool. It uh, has a sensor in it, so if the wind starts blowing, it'll retract automatically. Uh, but it's remote control. You can control it through Alexa and it's illuminated. The arms light up. So it really lights up this space nice. And then the fronts of the grill lights up, the knobs, little LED lights in there. And uh, these halogens light up 
I'm going to do a total review on this grill. Um, big shut off when the, uh, when the lid is closed, which is pretty neat. But that's the night view. I'm gonna start way back here. Most of the work has been under that roof line. All the, the kitchen area and all of that uh, chair rail stone has been concentrated in that area. I decided not to go all the way around the back of the house because I ran into a problem right over here meeting the height of the stone up with this window framing. I thought it would look funny. So what I decided to do was just put stone in this area where this outdoor kitchen is. I'm sorry, outdoor uh, shower. We've got this really neat shower uh, system that's gonna go right in there. Um, but that entire back wall will be stone. And then the area just under this window will be stone. And my thought is that it'll all blend together and uh, look really nice when you look at the whole space out here by the pool. Uh, this is the bathroom door right there, it goes into the house and uh, the stone work. We had a cabinet there and a thing that hung up against the wall that held suntan lotion and stuff, decided to remove that to really clean up this space. I've got a little bit of uh, pressure cleaning to do on the pavers where I got a little concrete dust, uh, but just a couple finishing touches. Uh, the stonework around the columns, and then of course stonework that comes around and meets up right here to the sliding doors, and then I started it up again on the other side, which goes right into the cabinet. That's what I did during this video. I've got uh, carpets out here now, rugs. Uh, this is a two foot by six foot. We got a little two by four or two by three that goes under that door and then a two by 10 that goes under those larger doors. That, those aren't here yet. Here's the center bar. A lot of people in photos have asked if this is a hibachi. Um, I'm really kind of glad I didn't think of that because if I did, I probably would have made that uh, griddle and uh, then just cover it when, it when we were using it as a countertop. Uh, but if I needed, if I wanted to use it as a griddle, I could. That probably would have been cool, but I'm glad I didn't think of it because it would have been a whole lot more work. <laughs> I've got that rug in place. And then uh, this whole space is completed except for the front. Uh, this is the pot rack. I've been into steel and cast iron pans for a long time. This is my collection. Uh, if you're if you're into this stuff, uh, I've got some Smithy, some Blue, some uh, Block Creative, a little um, Oss Iron from Australia, Field Skillet, um, and I've done actually quite a few videos on these pans. I'll put a couple links up here above. And then this is uh, Tarpon Redfish and Snook that I got from a local art festival and just tap conned that right into the wall. It came out really nice and finishes up this wall and gives me a place for all my pans, my wife. Uh, these hung inside our kitchen. If you've been watching the channel for long enough, you've, you saw them in our kitchen in the old house. Well, she wouldn't let me hang them in this house, so they're now out here. The reason why I'm at a stopping point is because of these two corners. So this corner right here and this corner right here are really important corners. They have to be perfect and uh, it just doesn't make any sense to uh, do any of the stonework on the front here until those cabinet doors come in. I put some spacers in. You can see here, these are just loose, um, but they just are spacers to uh, make it so that I could get that line perfect. But all of this uh, is gonna have to wait until those doors come in. So that is it for this project for a little while. R really appreciate you watching and, uh, and uh, I am really looking forward to taking a break from this project. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Topic unknown.